For this episode, I, I wanted to look back over an article I wrote a while back for publication, which was about a film I greatly admire, Michael Apted's documentary Incident at Oglala. I wanted to look at the true crime audience using this film, and it's something I thought viewers of this channel might find interesting. But I hope you enjoy it. Incident at Oglala is a 1992 documentary directed by Michael Apted and narrated and executive produced by Robert Redford. On its release, Peter Travis reviewed the film for Rolling Stone magazine, saying, Robert Redford's name on the marquee, he's the narrator and executive producer, gives this stinging documentary about racism and injustice its best shot at getting noticed. In the manner of Errol Morris's landmark documentary, The Thin Blue Line, this film makes it its business to get someone out of jail. From Travis' review, we know that this movie fits undoubtedly into the true crime genre. True crime is a genre that has remained successful with viewing audiences for many years across many platforms of distribution. Claire Thorpe wrote for The Telegraph in 2019, Over the past few years, the true crime genre has exploded. From podcasts and documentaries examining past cases in forensic detail, to books about notorious murders and television dramas that bring to life the stories behind the gruesome headlines, we seemingly cannot get enough of true crime. Incident at Oglala had a lot going for it, especially the star power of Robert Redford. And in 1992, the film was given a short theatrical distribution from New Line Studios. The popularity of this genre can be attributed to the fact that true crime invites the audience in to look at the evidence for themselves and draw their own conclusions about the crimes. Incident at Oglala looks at the trial and eventual incarceration of Leonard Peltier, who was found guilty for the deaths of two federal agents on the Oglala Reservation in 1975. At first viewing, the film does not appear to be biased in any one direction of guilt. Peter Travis from Rolling Stone also said of the film that Redford and his team make no claim for Peltier's guilt or innocence. This perhaps gives us a clearer understanding of what kind of audience this film is catering towards. Oglala is a successful documentary, as it gives its intended audience exactly what they want from a documentary in the true crime genre. The film targets specific groups of viewers who want to have their own input. Looking at the four C's of advertising, the film seems to be aimed at the explorers and reformers. These are the open-minded category of viewership who are described by advertisers as seeking enlightenment and discovery. Oglala appeals to this audience by presenting facts and legal evidence, as well as testimony from both sides of the argument, and targets that demographic of viewers who come to a documentary with an open mind. These are the people who want to learn something new and be allowed to figure it out for themselves. This graph from IMDB Pro shows the ratings and viewer demographics for Incident at Oglala from the period of April 2019 to March 2020 on streaming services. The figures show that the primary viewing audience for the film is a female audience aged 30 to 44 years old. The female audience for True Crime Documentary is explored in Tanya Horrock's book, Justice on Demand, True Crime in the Digital Streaming Era. Horrock states, the emphasis on how women in particular need to be vigilant against crime builds on the work of popular female true crime authors such as Anne Rule, who envisioned her true crime writing as a way of preparing women, especially young women, for how to deal with potentially dangerous situations. This is also backed up in Fisk and Hartley's study on television violence, reading television. They state, the category with the highest victimization ratio that is, the proportion of victims to aggressors, was that of non-white females. This evidence states that most violence and victimization on television is against female characters. Examining these observations, I can submit 
that the higher viewing figures of women indicate that in today's streaming culture, true crime appeals to this audience, as it is perhaps a source of information, and maybe even reassurance, for the female viewing audience. Horrock elaborates on this when looking at the audience for the true crime podcast, My Favourite Murder, which began in 2016, hosted by Hardstark and Kill Gareth. Stay sexy, don't get murdered, has become the podcast's catchphrase, and encapsulates its central premise that talking about murder helps to ward off anxieties about violence, and that women in particular need to fuck politeness in order to protect themselves from toxic masculinity. My Favourite Murder has rightly so gone on to become one of the most downloaded podcasts on iTunes. These observations seem to say that Oglala is popular with this group as they look for reassurance and information on violent crime as a method of knowledge, but also self-protection. This information also tells us that the film is still relevant and popular today on streaming platforms, almost 30 years after its original theatrical distribution in 1992. The critical response to Incident at Oglala at the time of its release was one of sympathy for Leonard Peltier and also admiration for the filmmakers. Noted film critic Roger Ebert praised Michael Apted's stance and gave his opinions on the film. What he does in Incident at Oglala is listen to a great many people try to reconstruct the time and place where the FBI agents died until eventually we believe that Peltier couldn't have been the gunman. Ebert's review strengthens the decision of the filmmakers to give the intended audience a choice. His review also makes me reconsider my original, unbiased opinion of the film. From the New York Times review almost a month earlier, critic Janet Maslin commented on the film's presentation of information. With interviewees ranging from members of the American Indian movement to the FBI agent in charge of the investigation, the film covers a wide area, but its focus remains clear. Mr. Apted establishes trouble between progressive and traditional elements within the community. Maslin's rating seems to be that the evidence is presented evenly from both sides. But in her opinion, at the very least, Incident at Oglala persuasively points to gaping holes in the case made against Mr. Peltier. Reading into these critic statements, I believe that my assertion that the film gives evidence from both sides equally is true. But when given the choice, the audience seems to lean towards Leonard Peltier's innocence. This proves that the film has a distinct stance. Going back to Travis, this film makes it its business to get someone out of jail. The fact that the film leaves the critics with a unanimous decision of Peltier's innocence shows that the filmmakers have achieved their goal. They have targeted a specific audience of reformers and explorers and created awareness of the Native American people's struggle in America today. The filmmaker's viewpoint is one of sympathy for Leonard Peltier, but by using the codes of television and having a good understanding of what the intended audience wants from a true crime documentary, the filmmakers have presented the film as a testament to truth and never lies to its audience. This gives the intended audience for true crime the most important factor that they want from their viewing experience. This is to be given the chance to partake and ultimately to be asked to make up their own minds in the case of Leonard Peltier. For those of you who've made it to the end, I just want to say thanks for listening. Um, I know this episode has been a bit more like a podcast or an article perhaps, but I just figured film fans would find it interesting. Incident at Oglala, I think, is one of the best, well-made true crime documentaries. Michael Apted, you know, stood the test of time. He was a fantastic director. For those of you interested, he also made a fiction film called Thunderheart, based on the same events that same year, 1992, which was released theatrically. It starred Val Kilmer in the lead role. Great actors like Fred Ward, the late great Fred Ward, Sam Shepard, Graham Greene, Fred Thompson. Great performance uh, by John Trudell and also one of my favourite actresses who worked with Sam Shepard quite a bit, Sheila Towsey, plays a great role in the movie Thunderheart. 
At the time I was writing this, uh, Leonard Peltier contracted COVID in jail. And you know, he's, he's probably going to die um, on the inside. For more information on Leonard Peltier, please check out the other great documentaries made about him and read his literature. My Life is My Sundance, Prison Writings is a fantastic book, very emotional. And his side of the story should be heard. Um, if you did enjoy this episode, please do let me know what you think in the comments. If you think it did work, let me know. Or if you think it didn't work, please let me know. I think it's an important thing that we get this type of information out there with the evidence as well. I'd like to say free Leonard Peltier. And uh, thanks for listening, everyone.